Welcome to Monday Night Pool, a brand new show from Matchroom Multisport as Carl and myself take an in-depth look at some of the bigger shots in nine ball. The new series starts properly in the new year, so to get the juices flowing for next week at the Mandalay Bay, we're going to take a look back to some of the key moments of last year's event at Alexandra Palace, where of course Team USA lifted the cup. Um, Carl, there were some real big moments, some great matches in that tournament all the way through. We picked out three key moments starting on day one. It's the third match. USA, they're already 2-0 down, and we know they've been in this position before. If it goes 3-0, it's going to be very, very difficult for them. And the rookie, Tyler Steyer, steps up. A lot of people asking, Tyler who? He's up against Niels Fine. And, well, let's take a look at this push-out shot he had. Crossing that one ball, attempting a safety is risky because the double kiss looms large. Push out, Cole. He's tying up to six and eight. Any time you play a push out, you leave the initiative to your opponent. You're at a disadvantage, so you want to tie up. Position of the balls. Yes, as you said, Nick, Europe are leading 2 0. Tyler Steyer, you know, a rookie in the team, playing a legend, Niels Fire, and he's actually he's a pool hero as well. So it's a huge moment. And as you can see, after the break, what you're kind of looking for here is what type of shot I've got. He's got no clear shot on the yellow one ball, and obviously, you get the option of a push out, but where do you push to? You can't really push down here because you're leaving some form of attacking shot for Niels. So, really, what you want to do is try and a lot of the players always look for trying to tie a couple of balls up. You know, that, that's always a good thing. So he, he elects to play the six onto the eight. So that's a bit of insurance. And he leaves the cue ball there. Now, unless it's a complete hanger, i.e., let's say if the two ball was the yellow one, most players would probably give the shot up, meaning hand it back. But what Tyler does here, Obviously, he's got the shot. He fancies playing the jump shot. Obviously, very good with a jump stick. Some players are really good with it, some are not. But interesting with this shot is he has to land the cue ball on the yellow one ball. If he doesn't, the ball can fly off the table. If he lands it, the seven's very close to the object ball. So he's not got a lot of room to land it, and he plays it absolute perfection. We're going to have a little go and see what we can do here and just give the uh, variables. So remember, you've got to jump over the seven. If the seven ball was here, it's quite an easy shot because the ball jumps straight away. So he's got to land it on the one. Just like that. But it can go wrong. Don't be fooled by that shot. But Tyler played it fantastic, just like I did, actually. So we're going to skip ahead now to day three. Towards the end of day three at Ali Pali, it's 8-5 to USA at this stage. And it goes hill-hill between Jason Shaw and Skyler Woods. It's been a huge match already. The crowd are really involved in it as well. This is the difference between it going 9-5 and 8-6. So it's a huge, huge moment in the Moscone Cup. Skyler's had the break, lost control of the table. Jason's got this shot at the one ball. Yeah, it was uh, such a key moment in the last year's Cup, wasn't it? You know, Europe sort of informed player, the man of the moment, and such a great potter. And he tried to spin this in and he made a bit of a mess of it. And, you know, he, that was a huge mistake for Jason. And you just feel like at 9-5, was it all over? It was a tall order. 8-6, the back in it, it was huge. And um, it was a real shame, really, because it's, it's all about momentum, the Moscone Cup. And, you know, obviously you want to try and get out there and win your point. There you see it again, just missed it. And I don't know, I just think, Certain players are really built for, for that environment. I mean, remember Daz, he could always handle them big, big situations. And it's just one of them things where it's, it's kind of a must win. I know everyone makes mistakes and we're all human, but it's kind of like you have to win this point now. It's, it's, this is the Moscone Cup. You've got to win. And uh, Skyler plays a good safety shot there. And, you know, he's got a very good touch with the safety game, Skyler. Very underrated, very clever on the pool table. Always leaves you in a world of trouble. In a world of trouble. It, it was a big tournament full stop for Skyler, wasn't it? He really came out on the world stage with his performance at the Moscow. Yeah, game. because the year before he really underperformed. And, you know, word on the street is he didn't really practice for it. He, he didn't prepare for it. But for this one, he went to Johan's house and he really, you know, dug deep. And, and that's what you've got to do. Obviously, Jason here. Uh, doesn't hit a rail. Just try to hit the ball first, I think, there, and just don't hit a rail and, and leave Skyler a chance. But Skyler still there looking at the table. You know, they're all there for the taking, aren't they? But the pressure and first shot went wrong with this one. This was a bit of a, 
a strange one, as you see Jason there, just looking up to the gods. Is that what it is in this, with the, both of these players, they feel in the pressure? 2,000 people in the arena, the huge point in the tournament. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, Skyler there is trying to come another foot up table there to leave this two ball. Easy position for the three, as you can see, the red three's on the same side. And he just leaves himself a little bit much to do here. There you see, just misjudging that one, Jason, which led to this. So now he's got to power this and come back across. And just from that very first shot where he had ball in hand, you could just feel the sense he was sort of chasing the rack then. I'm not sure when he plays this red three, is he trying to spin up on the same, the left-hand side of the table, or is he trying to come over? In some ways, I don't know if he was playing a bit of an exhibition shot here. Sometimes when you play this with top spin, it arcs a bit more, because he certainly played it at very pacey. If you're, if you're playing that shot out of this situation, in a normal match situation, how would you be playing it? Would you do it any differently? I think, I think my experience from playing on the TV table at Moscone Cup is leave yourself a shot. Don't try and overplay the table. The, the cloth is obviously brand new, the balls are brand new. You've got the TV lighting, it's very slick and slidey. Just play easy pool, give yourself a shot. The cut shots, the pockets play a lot more generous on TV uh, because of what I've just said. And, you know, he, he did make a bit of a mess of that one. Uh, didn't play, I don't know if he was going for the bank here, like a two way bank. He kind of, you know, I think he was looking at his face. And this one again, I, I fancied Jason for this. I remember sat there watching and I just thought, oh, he's deadly with a jump cue, is Jason. And I thought, oh, he's going to get this. Alex said in the commentary box, can he go off one rail behind the, the black eight ball there? But maybe it was a, a little bit tight. Again, in, in this position, you'd be looking at the jump shot? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not certain if the eight ball was in the way or if he just slightly cued across it. His mannerisms after the shot, He's disgusted with himself, as you'll see in a minute. Look, he's like really shocked. I don't know if he's just put a bit of side on it mm -hmm. and that little bit of side just squeezes the cue ball off a straight line and maybe that's why he flicked the eight. Uh, but he's one of the best jump shot players in the world, so you have to put that down as an, another huge mistake, really, at this level. And then, and then of course, Skyler comes back to the table, ball in hand for the second time in the rack, and, and from there, he can win the rack, win the point for USA and they're going to win the competition. Yeah, I mean, obviously now it's just a case of making sure you don't do anything silly. And you can see Jason there, he knows. Yeah, I mean, obviously even then you had to have a good touch because you could see, you just had to make sure you come past the eight and it's easy to overrun it or underdo it and he's absolutely perfect there. And as you said before, eight, six Europe back in the cup and you just never know, do you? But nine, five, it, it is a tall order. And you could see when we get to the end of this frame, what it means to Skywood as well. It's a huge moment for him. He's into the crowd. He knows it's massive, massive point for USA. Yeah, and he's feeling it himself. Even that shot on the seven, he's, he's not come far enough for, you know, a straight stop shot on the eight. So now he has to kind of bang this one in and come off the side rail. You don't want to be leaving yourself these ones. The referee there, Brendan Moore, just asking the crowd to keep quiet because they're getting excited and there's Skyler showing to the crowd. He wants to hear London now. Yeah, obviously Jason likes to give it a lot to the crowd and get them pumped up. So, you know, it's very high pressure. But Jason, you know, he won't be happy with himself there. He had a good chance and it's fair to say that probably, you know, it certainly give the Americans, I'm not saying it won them the Moscone Cup, but nine, five, eight, six, you know, we all know what that means. And you can see the other American players there know that as well. So we're going to skip on now to the very final shot of the tournament. It's perhaps not the most difficult of combination shots that Shane Van Boning's got, but this pressure at 10-9 to win the Moscone Cup. Listen, I'll tell you what, I'll let anybody in a pool room set this up on their table and try and pop the nine ball. That is not an easy combo. Look at the distance from the cue ball to the one ball, is full length, and it's not dead centre. The nine ball's not over the pocket. It's not a gimme, and I just think, with the scoreline, Kazakis had sort of come back in this match a bit, even though he was showing signs of a few weaknesses, but... The key to this combo here is the distance from the cue ball to the yellow one. He's not looking down the, the line of the shot, so the one onto the nine is a blind shot, and the nine's not over the pocket. He just made it look easy. But anyone, you go and try that on your home table or in a club, you're not making that every day of the week. And with the pressure he's gone through over the years, Mr. American Pool, I'm sure even SVB was glad to see that nine disappear. And let's just chat about the table, because is there an opportunity for him here to go safe? and? He plays the attacking shot, perhaps knowing that if he does go safe, it could get to Hill Hill. The thing is, nine ball pools are a very funny game. You know, there's only nine balls on the table. You can pop the nine at egg, any given point, it's in the lowest number of balls first. You could play the best safety shot you've ever played 
and then after your opponent's kicked out and hit it, sometimes they can fluke it, they can put you back in a world of trouble. So when you play nine ball pull, you learn to attack the table, and I just think that was Shane's moment. All the years of hurt, you had to attack the nine, and I don't think anyone would have played safe in that instance. And it's a moment that Shane Van Boning told us will live long in his memory. That's it for our first Monday night pool. We'll be doing many of these in the new year. It'll become a regular feature across our social media pages. But for now, the countdown is on. We're looking ahead to Party Poker Moscone Cup.